Hey guys, guess what I got for Christmas? Well, I got a 3D printer. And I have been using my 3D printer to make mounting attachments for my e-bike. So I thought today I would go over and show you a few of the things that I've made and show you some of the accessories that I have on my bike. And I'm really enjoying the 3D printer. It's a lot of fun to, to make these things, to design them and make them. And, uh, and for the most part, I've had pretty good success with it. I've had a few hiccups along the way and I've had to redesign a few things to make them work better. And, but it's a, a good, I know that 3D printing in itself, it takes a while to learn how to use the machines and the ins and outs of it and everything just like any other hobby or, or profession would so in time I'll probably be able to to do things a little more efficiently and maybe not make quite as many mistakes as I have with my first one but I haven't made that many mistakes I'm really really satisfied with what I've done so what I'll do is I'll go through a few of these things and show show it to you let me reposition the camera so I can get over here and show you close up what I have done Okay, the first thing I'll show you is my battery box. If y'all been watching my videos, you know that I have auxiliary batteries that I've made for my bike. And I've gone through various stages with making uh, different types of auxiliary battery boxes and things. But this is the first one I've made with, with my 3D printer. And this is it. Inside it, I have my 20 amp hour battery. And this is the top. The top comes off, the battery comes out. So it goes back in there. And I've got it in there. I've got some foam insulation to stabilize it in there so it won't move all around. And the cushion, it also some shock. But on this, I've also got the on off key for the auxiliary battery. I've got my plug in right here for my charging. So all I have to do is charge it up just like you do this bike. I've got a plug that goes in this hole. It's not in there right now. But I've got a, a weather plug that will go into that. But this has worked out real fine. In my one of my last videos I showed, I had a bag here. Had this here with a bag. I sorted out with it in here, which works fine. And for simplicity of it all, nothing wrong with keeping it in this bag. But I wanted to, to free up room in this bag for other so I could put other things in it and take full advantage of the bag. So I decided to put it on the outside and to put it in here and it really makes it a little bit easier to, to turn it on and off and things like that. Okay, next I'll show you what I've done as far as my smartphones and it, that I use and the control LED readout and everything. Of course, the controller has its own bracket and everything, so it works fine. <laughs> well, as you know, those that own the Palerno, Palerno does not have a volt meter. So in one of our previous videos, I showed you the volt meter that I hooked up. Well, I remounted it under my controller, made a little bracket for it, and it's secured right to the back of the controller. So now it's very easy to, to read that in, and together with the controller readout. Over here, I have my my normal smartphone, this is an S9, and that's my regular phone. This is one of my older phones, an S5, Galaxy S5. And I use, keep this with the bike all the time now. It used to just stay in a drawer since I replaced it with this one, but now I use it because it still has a GPS on it and everything else. So, you know, I can use it for a number of apps. So I use my Coolnik app on this, and I use my Wahoo app in my S9. And with my Wahoo, it keeps track of my cadence and my heart rate, and it also has an odometer on it, which I have an odometer with a, a sensor on it so that I pick, pick a, I can either use the GPS or the sensor on this. Now this one over here has got the, of course, it's got the GPS speed opt on it. It's got old opt on it. I got my time. So I can set these up to meet whatever criteria I want it to meet. I do a lot of videos so I like to keep track of a lot of what's happening. And it's always good to have several sources to verify that things are accurate, such as your speed and things such as that. And I have calibrated the Palerna odometer, uh, speed opter, not the odometer. But the odometer is off on this, and I really don't know any way to cor correct this. It's off a uh, little less than 10% off. And but the speedometer is very accurate on this now, very accurate. So th they're the three monitors that I use when I'm doing my videos. Under that, I have an auxiliary battery right here, USB battery. So I've got this. This has got. I plug one of these into this phone because the battery on it is about shot so supply gets its main supply off this battery and I've got another one over here that I can hook up to my uh, either this phone if I, I need to because the battery may be down or I can hook it up to a camera or whatever and I've got so that that's basically what I've done with this and that's my little readout right there on my battery level scale so I can tell what level uh, battery percentage I have I've been working on my controller here to try to get it to be more accurate for example let me see on this at 
46.4 says 30 percent so you see this is reading out 33 percent so it's not much off now it was really way off when they they come at factory default settings so way off but i've got this one fairly close now odometer's off shows about 1351 and i've got well over 100 more than that so it's uh, probably closer to 1500 on this bike because when this reads a uh, 9.1 my other gps is read 10 miles so it's it's off about nine to ten percent off this one is but speed optimal like i say the speed optimal is rock solid okay so that's the, the mounts that i've made for these now what i've made to secure them in they're all tailored made to fit and slide right in here and they actually slide in and the friction from sliding them in holds them in place that's in pretty tight this is just an extra little wedge that I put in to make sure that it is will not come out, but I don't think it would come out anyway. But that's how it comes in and out right there. Just slide it in and out. So it's real easy. This one does it exactly the same way. I've got little buttons that I put over on the side. Okay, so that, that, that's how that slides in and out. And I've also got over here, I've got some little buttons that I put on this so I can control the, the volume of the uh, phone. Let's see, that controls the volume. So I don't have to, to worry about controlling the, my controls on my phones because I've got, I can, I've got these little buttons over here. So that's that. This slides in and out, and it's also got a stop on it. So that's in place. I can move it around a little bit if I need to. Okay, so that's that. Let me show you how it, give you a little better look as to how the mounts work. But these are the mounts back here. I've got a little finger screw right here where I can can take it off and put it back on. Same thing over here. This is, these are about identical. The, <clears throat> this is a little different. This is an S5. So that is a little different from this one, but it's not much. For all practical purpose, you could probably put this one in here and you'd be fine. So that's how I've got those, and I can, can rotate them. They've got a pretty tight friction on them the way they are, but they will rotate. All of this will rotate if I want to change the position a little bit. So that's how that's in place. And at the bottom of it, I've got holes in the bottom so I, you can hook up your USB and things such as that. I also made a bracket for my strobe lights. Now these are my strobe lights. And the button's right here on the bottom. Cuts it on. And this one's got four settings. I usually run with that setting, with both, both my right and left on that setting. But that's my strobe light. And as you can see, I think, how I've got the bracket set up on it. Let me go over to the other one, maybe a little bit clearer. But the bracket, it screws on right back here, it slides on and screws on, tightens up. And I, I've got enough flexibility in it where I can rotate it a little bit and rotate it this way. Okay, now I've got this extended handlebar extension right here that I can use. And I, I since I do a lot of, make a lot of videos, I need a lot of rooms where I put cameras on and things. Now I keep this as, this is an old dash cam that I had laying around. So I decided, well, let me put it to use. So I put it on the bike and it's got its own little GPS. That's its own little GPS right there. And also I have on it, I made this bracket for, made a bracket for the GPS and made a bracket for the camera. And this camera will rotate so I can, can rotate it to get it angled the way that I want it angled. And it's hooked in, actually this, this one is hooked in to my controller USB outlet. So as soon as I cut my bike on, this camera cuts on. As soon as I cut my bike off, the camera cuts off. So uh, it's just like if it was in the car. <clears throat> now on this bar right here, I've got, now I did not make this clamp. <laughs> this, this is a good clamp. I would highly recommend them to have a one inch ball but they are, are good, it's a good universal clamp, and it works great for, for hooking up cameras and things because it's so quick to change positions. All you do is that, and it's got this jaw clamp, and you just clamp it down like so. And so I can put it here, here. I can put it on different places on the handlebars. I can put it on different places back here on my, my bike rack. Now, I did make this. I made this, this little uh, uh, clamp right here. To give me more flexibility. Now, I did copy one that I had previously bought, so it's not, this really isn't my design. It's kind of a copy of one that I already had. But what I do like about this, this clamp that I did not make is that it's so versatile. I'll show you back here. You can take it and you can clamp it on a multitude of things. It just, it's just got a, a very wide selection of possibilities of clamping it to different. Let's say I can clamp it on here if I wanted to clamp it on and get a side profile. This is a 360 camera that I'm using. And the 360 camera, let's see, I can take this and I can rotate it if I want to. 
but it's you know it's a selfie and I can take the selfie and extend it out over how I want to clamp it down but that gives you some idea of what you can can do with that clamp and it's it's really very sturdy but I use this a lot on my videos uh, this 360 camera and uh, so I've got a multitude of different angles I could put this at to set it okay I'll just take this off also back here on the rear I also have strobe lights and I designed these especially for this rack so I got my angles and everything I've got two of these so that's my strobe light on the rear and it just clamps right onto my rear rack so it works real well USB connector right there so that's easy access to it so that works great next let me show you something I don't know whether you'll be interested in it or not but I will show you I have a flag on my bike now I, I did this years ago when I used to do a lot of cross-country cycling I had one that I had on my touring bike that would screw into the lug this one actually works a little better because I, I don't have to do that much to readjust things but it's, got, it's on another one of these clamps I just was just showing you these universal clamps and it clamps on like so okay now you can see the flag well i can run this in a number of different positions but this would be how i would normally run this flag and it blows in the wind and it flops around <laughs> but when i'm on a lot of two-lane roads and i don't have much of a shoulder and don't feel feel like the cars just get too close to me north carolina has a three-foot rule i think most states do that means that a car is supposed to be three foot off the bike when it passes. Now, I would assume that that's three foot off would be the, actually from this point out three feet. And this flag really doesn't go out quite that far, but it goes out far enough so that they, they get the hint. But I can readjust it down to that position right there. And what that does, it gives me, when a car's come up, usually this is flapping in the wind so they, they see it. And uh, they will give you more berth going around you. They won't try to take your arm off when they go around you. And it really works well. I used this for, for years when I was doing cross-country cycling. And I think I had the flag hit maybe twice, three times, and about maybe, gosh, 10,000 miles of using it. So I did have it hit a few times. So that shows you how close some people get. But at least when they hit it, they know they hit something. So, well, and then just to put it back in this position, that's all it is to it. And so now it's up and out of the way. Now I also made some, these strobe lights are a little bit different right here on my wife's bike, but they basically have the same type of clamps I made on my other ones. But these, these have a little different shape, but I also made the same thing at the rear on hers. Her rack's a little different, so the brackets are a little bit different. More of a universal rack on these that fit in here. And I've got actually, it's made for handlebar stem, but I put made some shims that bring it. Uh, handlebar is usually about seven eighths of an inch, and with these shims, this rack is a half an inch. So I had to put shims in there to make up for the difference, but it works fine. Uh, with a 3D printer, you can make all that stuff. So I just made me some shims. So. That's just several of the things that I've done with my 3D printer. Okay, now I'll go inside and show you, show you a little more about the printer and maybe give you a little more insight, show you a few more things that I've made with it that I use on the bike. Hey guys, well I'm inside now. Feel a lot better. It's about 40 degrees outside. I haven't ridden my bike much lately because the temperature has been in the 30s and 40s. We had snow last week, had about five inches of snow. Haven't been able to get out and do much riding this year thus far. Was able to get out and ride a couple of times, so not a total loss. Well, I get for Christmas, I got my 3D printer and I explained outside how I made the brackets and everything for my smartphone and strobe lights and auxiliary battery and things such as that. I thought I'd bring it inside just to show you on the handlebars, a couple of more things that I've made for brackets. I made one bracket for my Scatio 2 drone beacon. The beacon fits in there. That's the beacon. That's a little mock-up I made of the beacon. So it comes in and out. Mock-up right here. So that was a mock-up. This will go on my handlebar extension. Same thing with this. This is a little wind gauge right here that I use on my videos to determine what the wind speed is when I'm trying to do speed runs and things. So that's a little mock-up of it. And uh, that's a little mock-up that I did of uh, 
one of the strobe lights. And also this is a bracket that goes on the handlebar stem. So that fits on the stem in my, when I was outside, I showed you where I had my auxiliary or my USB battery that I use on my bike. Well, this is the, the mount that goes for it. I've, I've got a, a second one that I made, which is a little more reinforced than the first one. And this is one of the first little panels I made for my voltage gauge. Uh, I did not use this one. I used another one. These are some brackets that I made for my camera. I use this Insta 361X for a lot of my videos. It's, it's, it's a 360 camera. It's got a good stabilizer in it. And it's just, just a great little camera for these videos that I do on the e-bike. Well, this is one of the mounts that I made for it. Fits on the handlebar. I can turn it back this way so I can read my instruments. And it also, same time, it can focus on me. This is a, a shorter version of a bracket. Uh, this particular one, I have my GoPro mounted on it. And I've got, also got another one that I made, which is a little bit longer than this, another mount, which is a little taller than this one. But all of them have your quarter inch by 20 threads, so you can mount your camera on them. And so these are just some of the mounts that I did. Really enjoying my 3D printer. It's over here to my left. That's It's a Flash Forge Adventure 4. It's a fairly new, had not been out long. A 3D printer. It was advertised to be a very user-friendly kind of turnkey 3D printer. So I went ahead and purchased it since I didn't have any prior experience with 3D printers. And I've been very pleased with it. I've had what I feel like good success. You know, I've had some mishaps like everybody with a 3D printer does. So things just don't work out quite right each time. Like for example, I gave out a filament when this was just about complete. That's just, just one of the things that can happen. But I've really enjoyed that printer. And I, since I like gadgets and I like to, to make things, a 3D printer is ideal for a person like me. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And I will leave some links. I'm going to try to put a lot of the, the things that I make online. I don't have them yet online but i will as soon as i do i'll post for of us that do have e-bikes and and have uh, 3d printers so that they they can download that information uh, and, and use this to, you know to make them some of these brackets so i hope you've uh, enjoyed this video so until next time y'all have a nice day mm -hmm.